So yeah, so information there, uh, wpscholar.com is my website. Um, I was, I'm a little out of the loop. We haven't done enough of these WordCamps for me to actually have put my slides up on my website. So uh, <laughs> I'll try to do that after, after this. So if anybody wants to uh, check out the slides, you can. But, uh, but yeah, so um, like, like she said, I've been working with WordPress for a very long time. Uh, I'm a developer. I've encountered almost in every WordPress issue, probably, not really, but uh, <laughs> a lot of them. Uh, so kind of wanted to share my experience, uh, not just for the developers, but for the people who own websites, may not know all the ins and outs of what's going on behind the scenes. So it's kind of the idea of, of today. So, uh, you know, obviously anytime you have a problem, there's uh, two sides of the coin. Uh, you know, something happened that you weren't expecting to happen or something didn't happen that you were expecting to happen. Um, and so we're going to kind of take a look at, um, you know, what all these different uh, situations could be. And we'll give you some structure around how you can actually go about the debugging process. Um, so my family, uh, you know, just to give you a little history on the title of this talk, uh, Clue, A Detective's Guide, right? Um, I'm sure everybody's probably played the game Clue, um, you know, with family or friends. So my family has basically banned me from ever playing Clue again um, because I have like an extra special super long grid that I draw out to the side of the piece of paper that they give you. And um, I can usually resolve the, uh, you know, figure out who done it in about a third of the time of most people. Um, so. I figure, well, why not apply a similar strategy to, uh, to WordPress? And then, um, you know, it, it seems to be a, a relatively reliable uh, way of helping to figure things out a lot faster. So hopefully, um, you know, while you may not be good at Clue, hopefully you'll be good at figuring things out uh, with WordPress. So as with any problem, uh, the first thing you want to do is you want to document what the problem is. Um, you know, what are, the, what are the symptoms that you're seeing? Um, you know, what's, what's actually happening or not happening? Um, you know, we want to end up at some sort of a diagnosis. You know, uh, what is the actual cause? You know, we want to get to the root issue of that. And then, you know, we got to figure out what we're going to do about it, right? So how are we going to handle that situation? So the idea is to um, kind of touch on all three of these. Uh, the, the meat of it is going to be the diagnosis because I think that's where uh, you know, it, it can be kind of difficult to figure that out if you're not familiar. So we'll, um, we'll spend a lot of time on that. But I want to kind of walk through uh, some of the essential details that you'll need to um, make note of when you're dealing with a WordPress problem, right? So <clears throat> first, and foremost, fermo <laughs> first and foremost, you want to make sure that you can actually reproduce the problem, right? Uh, so, you know, just because it happened once, potentially it could be a fluke or um, whatnot. So, and especially if you're if you're not the one who's actually going to be resolving the problem, uh, you know you need to be able to outline the steps so that if you go to somebody else to get help, you know you'll be able to to give them that information. Um, you want to actually, you know, make a note of what actually happened, um, and then of course you want to. Um, you know, make a note of what you expected to happen, right? So there's, you know, what was the difference between, between the two there? So these are kind of the essential details that you should always make note of, you know, when you first run into a problem. And um, you'd be surprised how much just thinking through, <laughs> thinking through that, you can actually start to pick up on some clues along the way. But uh, so first, uh, I like, to, uh, I like to simplify it into I did, I saw, I expected. Um, so kind of the uh, Veni Vidi Vici, the I came, I saw, I conquered. Uh, this is kind of the, the troubleshooter's guide to, uh, uh, to that. So this is what I did, this is what I saw, and this is what I expected to happen. So beyond those ex uh, essential details, there are de definitely some contextual details. And I, I won't say that they're necessarily optional. I think if, uh, if you have any of these pieces of inform information, um, it's going to be super helpful for you or anybody else that you're you know, trying to get help you resolve this situation. 
Um, but again, you know, part of that documentation process is, you know, were there any workarounds? Like, you know, I, I did this, I expected this to happen, but I had to go to this other screen and, you know, <laughs> do X, Y, Z to get it to actually work. Um, you know, some, some of those things, those workarounds are actually very big hints as to potentially what might be going on uh, if it works in one, one way and not another. Uh, you do want to make note of when that problem actually happened. Uh, obviously, you know, there could be a lot of reasons why, right? It could be you uh, happened to update a plugin uh, or somebody went in and started, um, you know, deactivating plugins. <laughs> Whatever the case may be, uh, making a note of when the problem occurred, or at least when you noticed it, or, or kind of narrowing that time frame down, uh, will be very helpful. Uh, which, of course, correlates to the recent changes. Um, you know, potentially uh, make note of any software versions and that kind of thing. Uh, you want to make note of the environment that you're in. Now, you're starting to look at this, and you're saying, oh, well, this is a very long list of things that I'm starting to not necessarily know a lot about. Um, and that's okay because uh, WordPress makes some of this pretty easy. Um, so I'll show you more about that in a second. And of course, if there's any error messages that you actually see uh, on your site, we'll make a note of those. And really, the um, you know any URLs or if you can get a quick screen capture or a video uh, or something like that is very helpful. But a lot of this information. You can actually go into WordPress, and if you go to the side nav there, there's the little tools section, and I don't think too many people click on it. Uh, it used to not be anything much of anything there, but we've started adding more uh, in recent WordPress versions. Uh, so this uh, actually will show you on the first screen uh, potential issues that you might need to resolve on your site. So sometimes your problem could be as simple as checking that list and actually addressing the things on that list, and then you know your problem might go away. But if it doesn't, there's an info tab, which is the uh, second tab, the screen that's not shown on here, but it'll actually list out all the details about what plugins you're running, what version of WordPress you're running, what uh, you know your hosting environment is, and all those kinds of things. And uh, you can actually just click a button, and it will copy it all to your clipboard. So if you needed to paste it into a ticketing system for uh, you know, whoever might be helping you, uh, if you're trying to reach out to a third-party plugin or something like that, uh, it could be very helpful. So just be aware that that is there. Uh, as far as those contextual details, you know, you'll be able to grab a lot of that just from WordPress. Um, but there are, there are things that you won't really have the context around, and I would recommend that you have something like, there's a plugin called Stream, and it basically kind of keep track, keeps track of all the things that happen on your site. There's other ones out there like Simple History and, and things like that. Um, but this will keep track of you know, who edited, what pieces of content, um, you know, when the last time somebody logged in, uh, you know, what, who activated or deactivated certain plugins, and it'll you know, keep track of when those things happen. So it's good to have that on there because it gives you just a little additional context. So if something does go wrong, especially if you're not the only person in there working on a site, you'll be able to at least have an idea of like, well, this broke when so-and-so logged in. <laughs> I at least know to like reach out to them and say, hey, you know, uh, we're having this problem. Are you familiar with what's going on there? Um, so that's one of the things I think would be helpful is to go ahead and probably install something like that. Um, could just be very helpful with the debugging. So with that, we're going to kind of jump into the diagnosis, right? So we've got all our details. We've got all of the information. We figured out some workarounds. How do we go about systematically testing to see where, you know, what, what type of issue do we have? How do we know where it's coming from? Um, this, is, this is where the meat of this is going to be. But before we do all that, I want to make sure that um, if at all possible, if you have a staging site, that's the best place to, uh, to test things. So uh, if you can just copy your live site to a staging site and then run through your tests there and try to figure out the issue. 
or at least making sure that you have a good backup of your site just in case something goes wrong. Um, there's been plenty of times where something that seemed pretty innocuous like deactivating or you know switching themes and then switching right back, you would think that wouldn't break a whole lot. Well, I spent three hours one day trying to put about 70 to 85 widgets back on somebody's website because switching the themes made all those things go away. Um, so it's good to have that back up um, just in case. <clears throat> so this is what I call our uh, troubleshooting matrix. So this is, some, and hopefully everybody in the back there can, can even see this. We'll, we have a slide for each of these items here, but um, so we have two, two sides. The first is on the left here, we have the issue source, potential sources of your problem. And on the top, we have the issue type, so kind of general categorizations of what types of issues you might run into. So, <clears throat> um, so this is your, your, your clue grid where you can start to mark things out as you eliminate them, and then eventually you'll end up at a point where you say, okay, well, this cross-section you know, is pinpointing this particular culprit as my problem. So, yeah, so just, there, problem. <laughs> uh, so, <clears throat> so, yeah, we're gonna run through all these different types. So the types of the issues, right? So there's different types of issues and um, having a, at least a general idea of, you know, why they're considered particular types of issues. How, you know, how do you, what are, what are these classifications that we're talking about? So first type is visual issue. So if something looks out of place on your site, um, you know, obviously that's a problem. We're not really talking about like your site white screens. That's, that's not so much a visual issue. We're talking more about, you know, my sidebar should be on the side, but it is at the bottom below all of my content on the site, right? So like it's some sort of layout issue, some sort of, um, you know, something's not looking quite right. So that would be a, a visual issue. So we also have what we call an interactive issue. So this is where uh, you load up a page, <clears throat> and then for whatever reason, you, you know, you're not able to like click on buttons or um, you know, just things that you would expect to happen on the page. Like you know, maybe you're in the back end of WordPress and you're working on a post, and you hit the save button and nothing happens, right? So this is an interactive issue. So this is, this is not something that's going to, um, you know, you're not, you're not loading up a page and then loading up another page. You're, you're loading up a single page and then whatever's expected to happen there is just not, you know, it's not functional. Um, which leads us to a functional issue, which is uh, more likely to span across one or more pages. Now, technically an interactive issue could be affecting multiple pages on your site, but the, uh, the functional issue is gonna be more along the lines of an entire, you know, your site just white screens, or maybe you realize that the footer doesn't load ever on any pages, or maybe it only, you know, has an issue on one page where part of the site just, you know, it's not there. Um, <clears throat> so this would be more of a functional issue. This kind of indicates something more um, kind of behind the scenes happening in the process of trying to load the page. It's just, it's never quite getting there. Uh, so that would be a functional issue. And then we have data issues, right? So um, this is where potentially it could just be a misconfiguration of some plugin, or it could be, you know, um, it could be, <laughs> could be a number of potential things. But the idea here is that it is an issue that's consistently uh, displayed across a particular entity type in uh, WordPress, right? So if you're thinking, oh, I've got a plugin and it does recipes, well, if this affects all of the recipes, potentially it could be obviously related to the recipe plugin, but, um, but it could be a data issue, something that a misconfiguration of that, right, that would be affecting all of those. So being able to kind of identify, well, my problem only affects this type of data or this type of thing, um, is very helpful. Then we also have security issues. Um, so 
Typically, security issues aren't really noticed until there's obvious signs of tampering. Um, and so if you're running some sort of security plugin or something like that, you might be able to pick up on some of the security issues earlier. Um, but typically, if you have a security issue, um, you know, it, it would be relatively obvious that, you know, someone's either hacked your site or, um, you know, there's, you know, strange things happening where your site turns up on Google with weird keywords or things like that. Uh, so then we have performance. I think most people could probably identify when something's just slow. Um, so if we have some sort of uh, performance issue, that one should be pretty, pretty straightforward to, to recognize. Um, and then we have environmental issues. So this is basically your hosting environment. Uh, so this is, uh, you know, basically if you've ruled out all of the other types of issues, chances are you probably are dealing with an environmental issue. Some sort of, um, could be a, you know, system or a PHP version or, a, you know, something, something behind the scenes that you may or may not know anything about uh, or even have control over. But um, so it, to give you an example of an environmental issue, I had a, a site that I had uh, built and I had not touched it in about six months. And then out of the blue, it just white screens. The, the entire site's just not loading. And uh, so I went looking and everything seemed like it should be okay. And, uh, and I was like, well, you know, I haven't touched anything. No one's even logged into the site in the last month. Um, it's probably an environmental issue, right? Some sort of hosting uh, thing that we're not aware of. So I reached out to the web host and I said, hey, um, has anything changed that we need to be aware of? And they said, no. I was like, okay, well, I guess I'm just going to have to dig in and figure out what's going on. Uh, so come to find out, there was a uh, particular library that they had updated that affected regular expressions, which if you don't know what that is, it's probably a good thing. Uh, but basically, <laughs> basically, if I took two characters and flipped them uh, in this one area, the whole site came back up. Um, and so then I reached back out and I said, did you update? XYZ, and then they said yes. Um, so, <laughs> uh, so if you've ruled out everything else, and especially if you haven't touched anything, and then it breaks, uh, it's very likely something on the hosting side. Uh, so you probably should just reach out to your to your web host. Uh, so we're so these are the, those are the categorizations, right? So these are the general categories, and so we're going to look now at, at the potential sources of these. Some of these are, might be a little bit similar, but um, but definitely uh, different. And these are listed kind of in order of likelihood that they are your problem. So just be aware of that as we're working down that list. So, I mean, everyone should be familiar with plugins, right? So you install a plugin, you get additional functionality. Um, so how do we go about testing whether or not something is specific to a plugin? So the easiest way is to turn all your plugins off. Um, obviously, if you're trying to debug an issue and you have functionality that is actually provided by a plugin, you don't want to disable that one, but you want to disable everything else. If you disable everything else and it's still not working, it's very likely the plugin that's providing the functionality is the culprit, uh, but it's potentially a, a conflict with another plugin or something like that that could be causing it. So, First thing you do is you deactivate all your plugins. And again, this is why you want to make sure that you start your debugging on a test environment or something that's maybe not public. Um, <clears throat> if you do end up having to do a test like this on a live site, there is a great little plugin um, called Plugin Detective. And Plugin Detective, basically what it does is it, it, it doesn't affect the front end of the site that everyone else sees, but it does provide kind of like an isolated environment where you can have a bunch of plugins not active, and you can test and see if the problem's still happening. So this is a great little tool. Um, it's actually a little bit faster than doing this yourself because if you deactivate them all, you're gonna be activating one plugin and testing, one plugin and testing. This one will actually deactivate uh, about half of your plugins, and then it'll, you know, half of the next. And so in fewer steps, you'll get 
to the problem a lot quicker if it is the plugin. So <clears throat> highly recommend that. Uh, it doesn't work all the time, but it is definitely a good option. So obviously the next thing most likely is your theme. Uh, so if you have a theme and you think that is a potential problem, easiest way to find out is just to switch to one of the default WordPress themes and see if that fixes your problem. And again, if the functionality is the theme uh, provided by the theme, then, you know, <laughs> chances are it probably is the theme, even though, uh, you know, you can't really test it with a theme, with a default WordPress theme. So, uh, so the next one here is caching. So like I said, this is kind of the uh, order of probability. So caching issues are sometimes a little tricky and a lot of people don't necessarily know how to go about figuring out whether what they're dealing with is a caching issue or not. So first thing you want to do obviously is to check out uh, the site on a different device. So um, doing that or checking out in a different browser. So for example, if you use Chrome, you might load up a incognito window. Um, you could also use a guest profile, which doesn't have any uh, Chrome extensions or things like that to, that could be potentially interfering. Um, believe it or not, uh, you do kind of have to rule out some of the things that you wouldn't expect, right? You might have something breaking on a site and then you realize that, oh, there's this random Chrome extension that I had on my browser that was breaking it. Um, so that, that is a potential, um, but most likely uh, you're dealing with a caching issue uh, if you switch to your another browser or something and it, and it works or doesn't work. Um, <clears throat> so the other thing you want to do is log in, log out, check it both ways. Uh, a lot of the caching plugins will not cache if you're logged in, um, you know, because, you know, you have the little admin bar with your picture in it and, uh, you know, it'd be a little awkward to cache a front end page with somebody's, um, you know, photo in the top right corner. Uh, so it's always, always important to, to check that out. And then we have data issues. And ag again, data is one of the categories, but it is also one of the potential issues. So this is where you basically just have to look and say, okay, you know, with the data that we're having issues with, does it correlate to a particular entity in WordPress, a post type, a taxonomy, a, uh, you know, particular you know, type of plugin uh, configuration, something like that. Uh, and sometimes it's, it's, it's really tricky. So there's these things uh, that I learned about uh, early on in my career uh, when I copied and pasted some code. Um, but it happens a lot too when you copy and paste just text and put it into a site. They have these things called zero byte characters. So they don't take up space, you don't see them. Um, but they break things, and uh, they're often called gremlins as well. So sometimes, uh, <laughs> if you're copying and pasting something and it's just broken, uh, the, it's better to just say, okay, well, let me just type it in directly uh, and see if that makes a difference, right? So things like that that might help you identify uh, particular data issues. And then we have third-party integrations. So for example, if you have a, a site and you have maybe a Twitter or a Facebook uh, integration of some kind, something like that, uh, you know, it would be pretty obvious if, um, you know, everything on the site worked, but then all of a sudden, you know, your Facebook feed or whatever uh, that you've got in the sidebar is just broken. So it's very possible that it's just, you know, it could be Facebook's down or something like that. Uh, so the first thing you want to do is just double check if you expect, um, you know, some, some sort of third party integrations going on and something's broken. The first thing you would do is check to make sure that the, the site's up and see, see how that's going. Um, but you also want to make sure that, um, you know, sometimes, sometimes it's the plugin that provides the integration. Sometimes it's the integration itself. So you kind of got to try to make that distinction. Um, so it's important to, uh, <clears throat> to do that. So then we have another potential source here is the server, right? So this is the um, computer that the hosting environment provides to run your website on. 
Um, so if the issue happens in the absence of code or data changes and you can't attribute it to something else, then most likely, again, it's kind of the same situation where you know, it's very likely an environmental uh, issue or a server issue. Um, you know, those tend to intersect quite a lot. So, um, and then the last on the list here is WordPress itself, right? So WordPress is pretty heavily tested across the you know, millions and millions of sites across the web. Uh, and so it's you know, less likely that WordPress would be causing an issue than a plugin that's only used by you know, 1,000 people or something. Uh, but those issues do happen. And so the way that you would validate if it's a WordPress core issue or if it's something else is to actually just try and test on a fresh WordPress installation. So if you can spin up a new site somewhere and you can actually test, uh, test there and see if it's happening, that's the way you would do that. Um, but again, you know, most of the time, it's the additional functionality provided by a plugin or something that is, is causing the issue. So how do we go about figuring out, uh, you know, so we've eliminated a lot of things, maybe not everything, but we've got a, a much better idea of where we fall in that matrix, and we've got uh, a pretty good idea of you know, where, where, where the issue's coming from, uh, from our troubleshooting. So we want to figure out what we need to do next. So the course of action is usually pretty straightforward in most cases. Obviously, if you've got a problem with a particular plugin, you're going to reach out to the plugin author. <coughs> um, the alternative is, of course, using a different plugin. So when I was first, uh, one of the first big sites that I built, this was back before you know, we had all the great events plugins and things that we have today. There was one person in uh, India who had written an events plugin, and that was the only events plugin I could find anywhere. And uh, so I had a client that wanted some events on their site, and so I put that on there. And uh, so we imported about 2,000 events, and then the page that was showing the events just crashed. Uh, took me a little while to figure out. Uh, the plugin author never actually implemented pagination, so there was no way to, you know, <laughs> limit the number of things that were showing on the page. We were trying to load 2,000 items on a single page. So I uh, reached out to the plugin author. I said, hey, you seem to have forgotten something important. Um, is this something that you would uh, be willing to fix? And he said, no. Uh, that's when I wrote the pagination and gave it back to him so he could put it in his plugin. Um, so, yeah, so it's important to, uh, you know, at least attempt to communicate and, and resolve things with the plugin author and, and let them help you if they will. Um, but sometimes they don't. And, uh, you know, especially with free plugins, support is also free and, and completely optional uh, from the developer side. So sometimes the uh, best course of option, uh, action is just to use a different plugin. Um, and the same situation applies with the theme, right? So you're going to reach out to the theme author, try to, try to resolve it. Um, sometimes you end up in these, these matches where you're like, okay, well, you know, uh, I think it's this plugin or this theme, and you reach out to the, to the author, and they say, well, you know, it seems to be conflicting with this plugin or whatever you have going on over there. And then that plugin author is like, well, no, it seems to be related to the theme. And so you end up kind of going back and forth, and it, you know, it's difficult, especially if you don't know what you're doing, to, to resolve those situations. Um, but again, you know, a lot of times, uh, it, even if you just offer, say, hey, um, find a developer, so can you dig into this issue a little bit? Um, so when I, one of the first plugins I wrote, it, it, uh, there was another plugin that did something very similar. Um, but you know, I had a plugin that did something a little bit different. That um, other plugin did some other things a little different. So a lot of people were using both plugins. They were just uh, slider plugins. But uh, but the way that WordPress uh, worked at the time, there was kind of uh, <laughs> uh, only one plugin could do X, uh, and the other one, uh, you know, if the whatever plugin was last to do X. 
uh, one, basically. So uh, it would, con so this, and WordPress plugins typically load alphabetically. So because of the alphabetical order in which the names of our plugins came, my plugin was constantly breaking because this other plugin was doing the thing and overriding uh, what mine did. So mine wasn't poorly coded, but it was also uh, a constant pain. Uh, so it's important to, um, to realize that those types of situations do and can come up. Um, hopefully it's a lot less now. But uh, if you do end up with kind of this tug of war, it's, it's good to uh, maybe get a, a third opinion on that. Uh, so caching is another um, thing you have to deal with. A lot of times, uh, just so you're aware with caching, if you happen to have multiple caching plugins or a host that does caching and then a caching plugin, uh, it's very likely that the issue is you've got two types of caching uh, coming from two different places and they're trying to override and step on each other. So just be aware that that's a potential that you might need to to resolve, but a lot of times with caching, it's a configuration issue. Um, you know, ideally, if you're using something like WP Rocket, where they've got really good support, and you could just reach out and say, "Hey, my site seems to not be, you know, properly caching," or uh, something like that, they'll be able to help you. If you happen to be using a free plugin like W3 Total Cache, um, it's got a million options, and if you're not at all uh, a complete caching nerd, then you will probably uh, <laughs> you will pro you you probably want to switch to a different plugin uh, or just learn a lot about uh, configuring cache. So the other one here is uh, data, right? So the only thing we can really say about that is once you figure out what data is wrong, uh, you know, fix fix the data, fix the configuration, whatever that may be. And then we have our uh, third party integration. Again, this is kind of a, you know, a sit and wait uh, if, the, if the service is down uh, or you can use an alternative service. And then we have the, um, the server and that's really just gonna be contacting and reaching out to your web host. Um, <clears throat> so then of course, if you do happen to run into an issue with WordPress itself, uh, then it's important to, um, to report that. So there is a, um, uh, typ typically uh, developers know how to, uh, thank you, how to, report a, how to report a bug through the official track system and all of that. Um, but typically if you just go to a WordPress support and you say, hey, I'm running into this issue, um, there's kind of some general uh, places that you can post and someone uh, should you know, be able to help you out and uh, help you get a report filed for that. Um, so that's, yeah, so that's basically, um, basically it. I could provide a lot more examples or, um, you know, if people have specific scenarios that they're like, hey, you know, I'm, <laughs> I'm having this problem, you know, what category, how do I identify uh, where this thing falls? Um, you know, we can, we can kind of take a look at that. Um, I'm at the Bluehost booth, um, so if you, you have those kinds of questions or want to actually dig into a specific issue, I'm always happy to, to help with that. Uh, but yeah, basically just want to open it up for general questions and um, I'll go ahead and see if I can pull up this matrix here again. And we start with a question from the chat. Ron Amick asks, the stream plugin, does that affect site performance much or at all, do you know? Um, it hooks into very specific actions, so it's not like, um, it, you know, it, if you log in, it's gonna just make a note of that. Um, you know, it, it will store those things in the database, but it shouldn't affect uh, site performance from an end user standpoint. Uh, it should be a pretty lightweight, um, Lightweight plugin. Next. Yes, second row. Have you found a way when clients and people that aren't super tech savvy to like, have like a, like a form, but like a way to be like, tell me what you were doing 
what caused this. So we get emails sometimes, and somebody will just say, the block is your brain. And I'm like, I, you know, I'll, I'll make a blank post, and I'm like, it's fine. It's not broken. And then they'll send a screenshot, and they're like, look, it's broken. I'm like, no, it's not broken. And what happened was a, something in a plugin changed the space between the blocks by, like, this much. So we're, I think we're trying to figure out a way to be like, okay, what were you doing? What caused it? Like, have you found out a way to easily streamline something like that? Yeah, so the question being, you know, how have you been able to streamline the process of collecting actually useful <laughs> feedback from a, a customer or something that uh, is having a problem? So, yeah, I, there's a lot of people who will just, yeah, exactly, send those emails. They're like, oh, yeah, this is, this is broken. And then you're like, it's broken how? Uh, it's broken where? <laughs> um, so, yeah, it, it, it can be difficult. But, um, but, yeah, I think if you have a way to kind of, you know, automate the uh, or enforce or, or just heavily push upon your, your customers the whole I did, I saw, I expected, at least they're not saying, hey, the block editor's broken, and then just like leaving it at that, right? Uh, they're saying, you know, well, you know, I was on this page, and I was doing X, Y, Z, and, uh, you know, the spacing's all wrong, right? I wanted the spacing to be this way, and it's not. Um, so then, at least, hopefully, they, you'll get some sort of helpful feedback. But, but yeah, people are people, and they have their own, uh, own ways of going about things, so. Next, uh, from the chat. Uh, Ron again, uh, how do you scan a site for broken links? How do you scan a site for broken links? So um, there, are, there are some great tools out there. there. Now, I would highly recommend not installing a plugin like Broken Link Checker. Um, it can be a very... Uh, you know, it, it scans your site from inside of your site, and it affects your site <laughs> as far as the performance. So you don't want to cause more issues in the process. Um, so if you're um, trying to scan for broken links, I recommend some sort of external tool to do it from the outside. Um, there's a lot of uh, kind of SEO uh, tools that can check for that. There's, um, there's a tool called HexaWatch. Um, they actually have some cool stuff. There's a Hexamatic and Hexaspark, and uh, they've got, they're, they're doing a lot of cool stuff. But um, they actually have a tool that will monitor not just uh, broken links, for example, but they'll actually al also monitor like the technologies used on your site. So if for some reason, you know, your site technology changed behind the scenes, it would actually let you know. Um, so if there was some sort of unexpected, um, you know, hosting change or something like that, it could actually uh, potentially let you know. Um, so yeah, so there's some great tools out there like that. Um, yeah, Screaming Frog is one. If you happen to be on a Mac, there's one called Integrity, which will do a full crawl of the site and detect a lot of the broken links and that kind of thing. Anyone else? In that case, thank you very much, and I believe it is lunchtime. <laughs>